Hello, so in this video um, I'm going to be looking at something a little bit odd, a bit different. This is a Mitsubishi HS8010 VHS, but um, as you can probably tell by the, the, the front panel, it's a little bit different from your standard domestic video recorder, although Pretty much it is um, a domestic video recorder deck um, inside, apart from it's known as a sensor video cassette recorder. So what is this machine? Well, you can already see the difference here insofar as there are no channels no, there's no tuner. Um, I'm sure some of you are already screaming at this video saying, I know exactly what that is. It's obvious. Um, so you can see the counter, there's no clock. The counter is always on, regardless of whether it's in standby or on. But what gives the game away a bit more is around the back of the deck. And I think that gives it away quite nicely. So, uh, various additional controls it would never get on a, on a domestic recorder. And then you've got record time. And as you can see by the label here, this is actually a time-lapse video recorder, or probably more accurately, I should call this a CCTV um, video recorder. So it's also got some um, triggers, which I think are really cool. Um, then we've got the voltage adjust settings, 240, and... Um, Video in and video out and still adjust, obviously, which is quite important. Um, it is a forehead machine, I believe. Um, I bought this around two years ago for about 12 quid on eBay. Um, it was something that had been cleared out of an old shop in London, I think it was. Um, sold as seen as not working. But knowing the vintage of machine this is, there's a good chance I could get it going. And for 12 quid, including the postage, it was £11.79. I don't know why that's stuck in my head. Um, it, uh, it was worth a punt. And um, I was just really intrigued by it uh, in general, really, uh, just how good uh, the the actual machine inside would be because obviously CCTV machine runs 24 7 generally and uh, has a hard life so uh, they need to be tough but this very much looked like and is um, very much based on a domestic video recorder so uh, yeah so let's take the top off um, and um, the bottom plate as well and uh, have a look at this. Now, I did start recording a video for this um, about 18 months ago. So I have got little snippets of footage from when I originally did an appraisal of the machine, got it up and running, got it working. Um, I know it works. I bodged one of the belts, um, just really because I was messing about with it. I mean, you know, it, it was never going to be something that I would ever part with or pass on or whatever. It's just something to play with for me. Um, completely just random um, piece of kit. Uh, I was just too intrigued not to buy it, especially for that money. So, uh, yeah, it's it's quite an interesting machine. Um, I should really know what machine this is based on because I used to work on quite a lot of them. Um, back in the early 90s, 
uh, quite a few of them sort of came my way. Uh, having said that, they were very solid machines. They really were incredibly reliable from what I remember. Um, you'd fit a belt kit and that was pretty much it. Um, I seem to remember having one with a smash top board um, because the board is here, directly underneath the, the top grill. Uh, can't remember why that happened. And uh, yeah, so let's let's take the top off, take the bottom cover off and have a look. Okay, so uh, that's it. Um, now, these were the belts I bodged. You see, I, put, I just put two thin belts on, and that's, to be honest, that's that's going to be fine. Um, I had forgotten that I actually didn't do a wonderful job in cleaning this up. Uh, but the rest of the rubbers are not that bad. I can't remember if I changed these belts. Um, I didn't show it in the original videos that I shot. Um, this belt hasn't been changed. I don't think. That's for the front loading system, incidentally. Uh, interesting with these, they have a tyre on the bottom of the capstan uh, flywheel. Um, what's really bothering me, it's got, it's got the same screws as Sony, uh, it's sort of earlier slimline Sony's, Sony beaters, uh, use these special screws, and this uses the same type of screw, um, which, I don't know, I don't know whether that's useful to know that. Uh, a nice solenoid there, and that's for that brake there, it's quite interesting. Oh yeah, I didn't really do a very good job. You can tell I was sort of like just more intrigued about just seeing how it worked rather than um, how good it was. Uh, it also feels be a little bit more resistance there than I would expect, but that's fine. Um, let's grab cloth, because maybe this was part of a bank of machines, because each machine had a single camera on it. Um, you could not have multi cameras on, on this. Um, so, uh, yeah, it would have been quite an expensive concern, really, uh, sort of to set up a, a multi CCTV system. Um, back in the 80s? I don't even know how old this is. Um, I'd like to think probably there was some sort of date code on it, but we'll, we'll come to that. Oh, there we go. There is. On the motor, 6th of November, 1986. So I suppose, I mean, that belt is actually really, really good. I'm not going to even bother with that. The tyre is ex excellent. Um, the front loading belt, there's a little bit of distortion in it, but it, it is fine. So I've had a look through my belts, and I have to say, I have no belt that is really perfectly suited um, for this, even now. Um, back then I had a lot less, when I first looked at this, I had a lot less belts. I um, obviously bought a lot more belts as they've come up, um, various projects. So I'm going to put the duplex belts back in. Uh, I had to duplex them just because... Uh, one belt doesn't give enough friction 
to guarantee that there'll be um, take up. This is a take up pulley here. Uh, it's not pretty, it's not ideal, not the best, but it's my machine. It's a bit of fun. Uh, nobody's going to really ever know apart from me. Um, and it makes no difference in that case. So let's get this back together. And then we'll have a look at the top. It's the top of these is the sight of it is sort of like a, a nightmare when you first look at it. Thing. One. Uh, um, so let's get the front cover off first of all. So tabs. The pull. And it uh, looks like I'm not going to be using any of the original footage because I can do it much better, <laughs> better now than I did then. Um, what's interesting is the front of this. This is from the domestic version of this machine. Um, and they basically just stripped off everything that isn't needed, which is actually pretty much all of it. We assigned the buttons and the, even the, dis the display is from the domestic version. I've just stuck some tape over it and um, what you'll actually see is that this digit is lit. So let me just turn it on. So yeah that's even with it off. It's just always it as a zero and this tape is just stuck over there just to help stop any sort of bleed of the the light coming through because so obviously uh, these would have been used probably in a darkened room the back room or whatever with little light so yeah this keeps the, dis the display nice and bright uh, without any sort of um, stray light affecting it um, I assume, I can't remember, but I assume this is also from a domestic machine, as is that. Um, and then there's the top. It's really quite cool, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, so let's put the power back off just in case. Take it apart. So I don't need to do this, although I'm interested to see how well I clean the heads because the heads were in a terrible state and I may well um, just show you a little bit of the original video that I took to show what this machine looked like um, together what, with what the capstan looked like. Um, before I, when I first opened it up, I remember how this goes. Uh, I forgot to undo anything. Probably. They are really cool how they come apart, but they are a little bit like. Oh, yes, I remember. Because you can see how daunting, you know, as, as a consumer, you thought, oh, I'll just clean the heads. I know how to do that. You take the top off and you just look at that and you think, oh, I'm just not going to do that. It looks too 
terrible. Actually not. Um, it's actually not that bad. And seem to remember it's a little bit different in this machine. Um, maybe. I don't know. Did he have to remove that? He did. The domestic version. Uh, I think that has to come off as well. So the sun clips. Sort of snap the brake stuff. There we go. Uh, I think that has to come off as well. Does it? Yeah, I think it does. Like so. Keen eyed of you might have noticed a little additional thing. Um, a, a, a strange looking component as I lifted that up. And we will get to that. It's actually really cool. Um, So, there it is in all its glory. So yeah, it's actually really cool. Uh, the electronics is very interesting, very different from your domestic machine. Um, of course, a bog standard transformer type power supply, very common at the time. But reliable backup battery custom i'm guessing that's an eprom um but that'd be custom firmware i'm guessing on there and microcontroller and um some rather exciting bits and pieces there i actually know what these switches do uh, i don't have a manual for this uh i did have a look at the time for one couldn't find one. Um, but obviously for different options for how it works, whatever that would be. Um, so bog standard front loading system, bog standard deck. Um, so I'm do this all one-handed. It's always fun, isn't it? I thought I'd get away without having to remove that, but I seem to remember I've got to remove that heatsink as well. This heatsink here, so let's do that. Just to get a bit more clearance. Um, I seem to remember there's only one um, regulator on this. Could be wrong, can't remember. Even more. Two. There we go. Dust. Put that back a bit. Oh, I missed a screw. Of course I missed a screw. I wouldn't be right if I didn't miss a screw. Another screw there. Forgot about that. And I know that screw is there as well. Why? Why did I forget in this instant? <laughs> I think it's one of those things that at the 
time when I was doing a few of these at, at, in succession, I always remembered to check for the screws that I'd forget. <laughs> now I'm forgetting the screws that I try and remember. But anyway, so I've actually done not a bad job, to be fair. Um, I put a new pinch roller on it, which is quite cool. Um, I've given it a good clean, fair play. Uh, it's not perfect. But I think I just thought I'd give it enough of a clean to get it going. Put an old tape and play with it. So that's fair enough. Um, that's, that's not bad. Yeah, it's still quite a bit of crud. Like I said, I'll try and put the um, footage of what it actually looked like when I first got it. It was in a bit of a state, this deck. Um, so, yeah, obviously didn't bother too much. I might have been getting a bit carried away when I said I did a good job. <laughs> so I'm going to give it a clean. Um, again, there's bits of stuff everywhere, isn't there? Bits of well, possibly mould. Um, but I think it's more to do with um, being in damp conditions and the metal sort of um, uh, sweating. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a good clean. So just giving it a clean up. And um, I thought I'd just check this battery, and unbelievably, this battery still has 0.5 volts in it. <laughs> um, now it isn't NICAD battery, so that is charging. Uh, that's quite amazing. I mean, obviously it's not that healthy. You can see just that it's been sweating a bit. Um, it's not really caused any damage to the board or anything as such. But um, really impressed by that. Yeah, it is a GS. So uh, they tend to tend to last pretty well. The GS batteries. Um, hmm, interesting. A bit more cleaned up now. Um, the heads are looking much better. It's still not absolutely perfect, but they'll do for this. No, a drum is still pretty marked, isn't it? That's had a really good clean. Um, hmm. Tempted to give it another really good clean. Mm. So I've given it another good clean. <laughs> and uh, it is looking a lot better. It's still not perfect. Oh gosh, it's still not... It's still got some rot there, signs of rot. But it's a lot better, so I'm happy with that. And I do know that it, it worked fine, even with all that crud on. It was okay. Say so it's only for me, so for record tape at the end of the day, I record tape. Um, but I think we're at a position now where we can turn it on and give it a try. Um, yeah, so uh, the idler is actually really good in this as well. So, yeah, before we do any more, um, the thing I was alluding to with the strange component that you might have spotted uh, when I lifted the board up, or when I took the top off even, is this thing um, here, MY, and that goes round to... A 
usage usage hours meter, and uh, I didn't quite make that out. But according to this, it actually had not much use. Um, <clears throat> maybe, maybe it's had another one. I mean, ten thousand hours, and this has had just under a thousand hours of use. Then maybe uh, I don't quite believe that. But uh, who knows? The way on the head suggests that it has maybe had more than that. Um, but from what I remember, the quality of the recordings were actually really good. So it's a three head machine, incidentally. Um, I think the reason I thought it was four is because it's got the four posts. But uh, that fourth post is not used on this head drum. Um, Okay, so we're we're working well now. Um, no shame the spring's missing off that. I might I might be able to find one off another machine, a scrapper or something. Or I don't know. I'm not too too worried about it. Um, so what I'm going to do is, um, as you can see, that's playing well. And uh, pardon the laptop. As you can see, it's a black and white picture, which you'd expect because they were black and white. <laughs> um, back in 86, uh, for CCTV use. Um, the actual machine, I was trying to remember um, previously uh, what machine this reminded me of or what it's based on. It's actually based on the Mitsubishi HS306. Um, and uh, that dates from about 1984. I've actually managed to download a, a service manual for it. So that will give me some pointers as to uh, how to get the best out of this machine, uh, should I need it. One thing I really want to do um, is I am going to put this camera on it, which is a Panasonic um, WV... MP244, um, which I think I mentioned earlier, I was going to try and uh, get going, taken foot down from an old CCTV install when it was upgraded. Uh, it does have a monitor out, which I believe is just straight video out, um, using a standard 3.5mm um, plug. Um, similar to a headphone socket, if you like, and 12 volts DC. It's only 400 milliamps as well. So what, what my other thought is, is to take the um, 12 volt um, power from here. I assume it has got a 12 volt rail and uh, put a socket on the back of it, um, fuse it to 500 milliamps and uh, use that to power this camera. And... Uh, it's not something I'm going to permanently use, but it's just something fun to play with um, and to see what the results are like. From what I understand how this works is it will take a frame every so often, depending on how you set the, the rear record time um, switch. So... Um, we get it every 15 seconds up to five minutes and um we've also got an external trigger which i'm i'm not bothered with to be honest um although i might have a play with that at some point but uh yeah so that records and then playback is at standard speed um i can't see there's any way of varying the, the playback speed so you get like a very fast playback. It's like a time-lapse machine. That's basically what it is. Um, but it does have a good freeze frame, apparently. Um, I've not tried it with its own recorded tapes. In fact, I've not tried recording on it. So uh, that'll be fun. So I've just done a freeze frame now. I'm not too sure how that's that's going to work. I mean, it might be different once it's um, played.
playing with its own tape. Let me take that back off. Um, then press play, you press still. So times two. No, uh, what is it? What's this actually got for the tracking? Uh, so it's got pictures soft, soft, sharp, and then tracking. So, hmm. Okay, well, I'm intrigued to see how this works or doesn't. Um, it does feel a little bit pointless, I have to say, even as a CCTV machine. But uh, I think what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to try it on... I'm going to put a, a good quality tape in, brand new old stock, and um, we'll try doing some recording with this and just see what the playback's like. So on the test bench, and we've got a rather nice Super VHS Pro tape. Um, probably don't need to use such a high quality tape, but um, it's going to give it the best chance. I mean, it's, it's recording in black and white. It's a black and white video recorder. It doesn't need bandwidth. Um, but actually, open one of these. Fuji tapes. There we go. It's not the labels, mate. Oh yeah, nice. Um, so now I suppose the first thing we need to do is actually set with those. <laughs> Really want to touching um, the set the the timing. Um, so I'm going to set this to zero. Um, Let's do 15 seconds. So click over to 15 seconds. One zero. So that now becomes time lapse rather than just recording black and white. <laughs> um, and uh, Well, that's sounding not very healthy. So, I don't actually understand at this stage what it's doing. Um, because that's just recording. Oh, it's the idler. It's squeaking. Or it's the belts. <laughs> It's starting to work again. What I am finding, it probably needs a complete strip down re grease to be fair, but uh, if it's been stood even for a few hours off, it just doesn't wind very well. Um, so, yeah. Um, oh, it is colour. Ooh. And there's a clock on it. 
and stuff. And how do you program that? <laughs> ah. Yeah, it's, I think it's the idle. I can see problems there. Um, okay, so that being the case, what's the store like? Perfect. Obviously, you've just got this jog. Yeah, it doesn't want to rewind. Oh, yes, it does. It's happy in there. So, what does this actually do? And how do I access these extra bits? So this goes down to this board here, here. What did these switches have anything to do with it? Um, let's try a record again. Yeah, so these squeakings all but gone now. Yeah, so the control for the, the speed is there. Um, that comes to, to this board here, which is basically all dedicated to the, the CCTV um, style of operation this machine has. Um, this switch, if we go up here, turns off that display. And then this switch, now I'm not sure exactly what this switch is doing. If you look at the display, I don't know if you can see that, but it's ever so slightly changing it. So what I'm wondering, So, concluding the video, uh, this is going to be part one of this. Um, I'm a little bit stuck. I, I had to think about this, and um, it's a CCTV machine, so obviously you want the evidence to be accurate as, or as accurate as possible. So, setting the clock on the back here, and the date, and... Um, when I think about it, it's actually quite cool because um, it's actually year 2000 compliance. It's actually saying it's Saturday, and it is actually Saturday. So that's really cool that it's um, it's actually got all of that information stored in the EEPROM. Um, so yeah, wonderful. But um, as you can tell by the clock, it's not advancing. And I don't know how to actually get the clock to set and start. Um, I can set it, but I can't start it. And I've tried a combination of presses, pressing the set button for so many seconds, pressing the shift button so many seconds, pressing the shift and the set button for so many seconds, pressing all three for so many seconds, and I think, if I can find out how to actually get the clock to tick, um, the record time then becomes enabled. 
So that's where my problem is. Now, I don't have a manual. Um, these things are incredibly rare. Really, really rare. I can't find any information on them. And I can't actually find much information on the um, HS306 uh, that it's based on either. I mean, doing an image search, I, I haven't even found an image of the machine, uh, let alone this one. So, um, yeah, I do sometimes think that maybe Mitsubishi machines are sort of rather overlooked, um, especially with this vintage, the 80s machines, um, partly because they were so reliable. Uh, maybe nothing terribly special, but, I mean, they seem incredibly well built. But, um, I mean, you could argue that maybe there's something wrong with the, the, the tick, the, the clock actually ticking, but there's only one um, oscillator there. And that has to be working because everything else is working. You know, it's it, it's basically a mini computer as such here. Um, so the clock is an integral part of that whole computer, mini computer working. So there has to be something. Um, and it'll be some sort of tamper proof reason why. Um, you can't change the clock and then get it to set. Um, it's picking up the here. This is the recording um, count. So it's picked up that it's it's like the fourth time I've pressed record. Um, so that's advancing, but I just can't get the clock to work. So help, really. Um, does anybody know how to actually get the clock to set? And, um, yeah, I mean, if you use them back in the day or you have any experience of servicing these things or anything, really, any clues or any advice would be very, very gratefully received. Um, I mean, I've sort of really, really fallen in love with this, this machine. It's, um, it's just so crazy in so many ways. Uh, in 2020 to find this sort of um, this sort of tech so uh, yeah I'd love to be able to do some videos with it um, some time lapse and uh, yeah just sort of show it off in this the, in part two so chances are part two won't follow too quickly behind this video um, just because obviously I need to find that information out or if you can help me. But uh, yeah, <laughs> actually really pleased about it. Uh, really pleased to get this machine working. And um, I will, in the meantime, try and find a belt for those duplex belts because that's just pants really. And uh, I now have some rubber reconditioning fluid, which I don't like using. Um, I, I never use it on any machines that I, I do for other people or whatever. Um, but in this case, I'm going to use it on the idle on this. And uh, we'll see how that goes as well. See how, how good it is. Um, I believe they're a lot better than they used to be um, back in the 80s and 90s, where the rejuvenation was so short-lived. But we'll see. Um, so how this works is um, if it's triggered across here, the machine will then work or record for however long it says on this switch here, tallying to the, the record times here. So um, if I put a trigger on here uh, with an external timer, for so many minutes, I can then get it to record for however long I set this for here. So, um, hence why this is called a sensor recorder. So, gets a sense um, input, records for so long, and then stops. 
So that's what I need to do to get this to, to work as a time-lapse recorder. I way overthought this. Um, <laughs> I thought it was a lot more uh, intelligent than it actually is, um, which it's 1986, so it's it's not... Um, it's not going to be that that complex. Um, but yeah, I got that totally wrong. So um, I'll do that. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll make a little timer um, that will put a trigger pulse in here. Um, I believe it sorts the ground to trigger it. So I'll do that. Set a record time, probably quite short, 30 seconds, and we'll do some time lapse. So what do you know? The clock is working. Um, and I can set it to the correct time as well, and it ticks on nicely. Um, but it takes about half an hour before I'm powering on the machine, before that will actually work. So, uh, yeah, it's obviously something not right. And my, my guess is it's probably that battery that's causing the problem. So I'll, I'll change that and uh, update you in the second part of this video. Thanks for watching.